we're going to start a game called Pest Buster. So I'm going to click New, new File. And I'm going to call this one Pest Busters. Right click Rename. I'm going to rename Frame 1 uh, Two Player Game. No spaces. So now I'm going to go load, load my library. So I'm going to right click down here, click New, come down to User. My documents. Go to your game design. Resources. Project 5. Click Pest Busters Library. Click OK. So right click, click Rename. Call it Pest Busters Library. So I just double click Pest Busters Library, and there it is. So now I save this as Pest Busters. And Project 5. So now you're ready for lab two. So now we're going to go into the frame view. And now we're going to add toolbar, another toolbar. So I go view, toolbars, or add layer toolbar. Go over to your layers toolbar. It should show up on the right. If you don't see it all showing, just drag it out. See where the double headed arrow is? You can drag it out and make it bigger. So I'm going to add a couple more layers. So this would be the furthest in the background. So now the thing that's furthest away in my background here is a cave background. So I click on that. I've got one selected because one is the furthest away. So I drag this here. And I right click my cave background. I click a live in line and frame. And I click left. Right click a line and frame and I click top. And I can lock it in place if I'd like. Now the in front of the back the cave is going to be the rocks. So the next background is going to be the rocks. I'm going to double click two. Right here. Now I'm going to bring up the top rocks. Drag them up here. Right click. I'm going to click a line in frame. I'm going to line to the left. Then right click. I'm going to click a line and frame and a line at the top. Then I'm going to take the bottom rocks and put them in here. And um, I'm going to right click them, a line and frame, a line on the left. Then right click, a line and frame, a line on the bottom. So now my second layer, I have rocks on the top and rocks on the bottom. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lock layers. Now if you see these icons on here on the various layers, you can see that, that layer 1 is the back, is the furthest away from us. Layer 2 is next to us. And eventually we're in layer 3 we're going to put the players. But we want to lock this layer. So I'm going to click the lock here. That will make it red so we can't move anything on that bottom layer. And if I wanted to make it invisible because I had to work on, say, layer 2, I could click that I and make layer 1 invisible. Same thing with layer 2. Now I can click on layer 2 and I can lock that layer. So I've locked both 1 and 2. So now I'm going to add the two ships to the uh, playing area here. So I'm going to click over here on ship 1. First I'm going to go to the third um, layer here and I'm going to click ship one and I'm going to put them all the way to the top here and I'm going to come on down and add layer to uh, put ship two on the bottom here right next to that layer of rocks so now if I've got all my late my three layers and my objects on the correct layers here 
three layers, all your objects on it, you're ready for lab three. And now here's the way that I set this to scroll forever. <laughs> I come over here to um, two player virtual game and double click this. Now over here where I make sure settings is selected and I come on down. And virtual width, I put minus one. That means scroll forever. So now I'm going to create that scrolling event. I'm going to go view, and I'm going to go into the event editor. I'm going to right click on new condition. I'm going to go to special. I'm going to right click, and I click always. Now under the storyboard under the storyboard editor here, storyboard controls, I'm going to go to scrollings. Now I'm going to click center horizontal position of window and frame. Now I'm going to delete what they have there. And I'm going to click retrieve data from an object. I'm going to right click the storyboard editor. I go to frame. And I'm going to cl click on X coordinate of left visible edge. Now I'm going to add to this X left frame. I'm going to add to it plus 321. That's going to be the new center. I click OK. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my layers to wrap. So I'm going to go back to the two player game uh, frame view. Double click. Now I'm going to click on frame 2. Now I'm going to come on down. Now I'm going to click on wrap horizontally. Then I click on frame 1. I'm going to come on down. I wrap horizontally on that one too. So I've got one and two wrapping. Let's see what that looks like. So there you go. You see layers one and two wrap, but the ships don't wrap. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the, um, the X coefficient on the third frame so it doesn't move. So I come over here to X frame, frame three, I come down to X coefficient and I'm going to set that to zero. Just click on zero. Next, I'm going to set the layer two coefficient here. So I've got layer two. Layer two is going to have a coefficient of two. And layer one is going to have a coefficient of nine. Okay, I found that you might have to refresh the frame editor. So I, if I move to frame two, for instance, and one still highlighted, what I do is I go click view, frame editor. And it'll hit, hit the other one. So I click here, I go view, hit frame editor. It'll get rid of the highlight around the other one so I can add the individual. Um, so I can add this one as a set at two. 0, 2, and 9 for the X coefficient. So all I have to do now is run the game. And you see it works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the ship movement. So I'm going to click on the ship. I'm going to click on the running man. I'm going to click on static. And I'm going to choose the eight directions. So now I'm going to click down here on directions. And I'm going to take away all my directions. And I'm going to go at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. It's only going to be able to move up and down. So I click Enter. So I click my other ship and the same thing. Click on him. Click on Static. Go to 8 directions. And then I click on the numbers. Then I clean out all the directions. I say up and down. That's all he's going to be able to do is go up and down. Click Enter. Now I'm going to contain the ships within the area of the stage here. So I'm going to go to my view menu, go down to frame editor, I mean event editor. Now I'm going to create a new condition, right click, 
going to click the first ship, click right click and click uh, position, test position of ship one. Is he trying to get out the top or the bottom? So click OK. So what do you want to happen? If he tries to get out the top or the bottom, we want a movement bounce. Now the same thing with the other ship. I'm going to right click here. Um, so I right click the second ship. Oh, that's the first ship. Second ship. And I'm going to click position. Test position of ship two. We'll check top and bottom. Okay, click OK. Now what we want to do for ship two is it leaves a play area. We want it to bounce. Movement, bounce. Just like that. So now I gotta set ship two to uh, player two. So I'm gonna go view frame editor. I'm gonna right click oh I'm going to click this and make sure this is chosen up here. So where it says player one, I switch that to player two. Now I'm going to work with the player two control. So I'm going to click Pest Busters here. I'm going to go over here to the runtime option. So I'm going to come down to players. I'm going to click edit. And I'm going to come up to player two. And I want the up arrow to be the W and the down arrow to be the S. So I click OK. And I click OK again. Then I test my game. So I can go up and down with the arrow keys on this guy. And I can go up and down with the W and S on this guy. So next I'm going to add the bullets. I'm going to put them on the bottom, not on the left. One bullet. Two bullets. Shooting action. I'm going to view menu. I'm going to go to event editor. I'm going to create a new condition. And I'm going to go to the mouse pointer on the keyboard. I'm going to right click. Keyboard upon pressing a key. And the key I'm going to press is the space bar. So I'm going to do a new condition. Mouse on the keyboard. Uh, the keyboard upon pressing a key. And this one I'm going to do the control key. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on prompt pressing the space bar on my first rocket ship and I'm going to shoot an object and I'm going to shoot bullet one and I'm going to click OK. Now um, I'm going to shoot in the direct and selected direction and now I'm going to select one direction. I want it to go straight ahead and go OK. OK. Now player two, I'm going to shoot an object. This one I'm going to do bullet two. I go OK. I'm going to shoot in selected direction and I'm going to have him shoot straight ahead. And I'm going to click OK and OK. So now I'm going to test the game. Run application. And I'm going to shoot. Now the inactivate fixture is going to um, make me run out of bullets, so I don't want that to happen. I'm going to go back to the frame editor. Okay, double clicking. Now I'm going to click on um, bullet one. So I click in uh, my runtime options. I come on down, find inactivate if too far. And I'm going to go no. So I'm going to click on the other bullet. And I'm going to come on down to inactivate it's too far. And I can put no on that one too. And now you're ready for project five.